Hello, everyone. I hope you all are doing well today. Um, I'm here to be live again with you all. Um, my name is Siobhan Thomas with New Beginnings with Me. And um, it's Father's Day, so I first want to start with saying Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Happy Father's Day to my dad, Paul Freeman. Happy Father's Day to my brothers, Paul and Jamal Freeman. Happy Father's Day to my cousins. Happy Father's Day to my brother-in-law, Devon Brown. I want to just say Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. But I wanted to get started with our topic once again on Armor Strong. Remember, we're continuing it. We begin it in the month of May, and I wanted to start it again in the month of June, just continuing with it. Um, and so... Here we are again with um, New Beginners with me, dealing with the topic of armor strong. And remember, it's from the perspective of being armor strong, being equipped with the full armor of God um, as a believer in Christ, and more specifically as a woman. And so um, the topic that we're dealing with today is being a brave woman, being a brave woman and being armor strong. What does that look like? And so I'll go ahead and pause my music. That's um, Tasha Cobbs Leonard. Um, you know my name. I love that song. If you haven't checked it out, go ahead and check out that song. It's on my website. I don't know if you have been to visit my blog website, www.newbeginningswithme.com. Um, it is a place for you to go and read different blogs that can encourage you and uplift you. Um, I have featured posts with blogs that have been the most read, most comments, just blogs that really touch the hearts of different people. And so um, if you wanted to look in the featured post section, you'll um, be able to do that. But all the other ones, the most recent ones will be what I'm doing right now. So again, we've been dealing with Armor Strong. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, so um, brave means possessing or exhibiting courage or courageous endurance. So I mentioned last week that I once heard that courage is not the act of fear, but courage is the ability to continue to act in spite of the fear that is already present. So as a woman, we have to be brave. We have to be brave women. There are a lot of ways that the enemy will try to bring us to fear um, in different areas of our lives. However, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The way we experience victory is not by cowering in fear, but instead um, by acting bravely, continuing to move forward, continue, continuing to do what God has placed on your heart to do, um, such as goals that you're aspiring to reach, going after those goals and reaching those goals. And so furthermore, I want to go into three things. There are three ways that we can act as brave brave women of faith specifically. So I have three things that I'm going to touch on on how we can act as brave women of faith. And so the very first thing that I'm going to discuss with you all is obedience. Being obedient to God, being obedient to God is an act of bravery. All right? Being obedient and this is why I'm going to touch on it right now. Being obedient to God is an act of bravery, all right? So it takes bravery to be obedient to God. Sometimes obedience to God means that you are walking completely by faith. Following God's instruction often takes you out of your comfort zone. However, there are, there are benefits to being obedient to God. He may lead you to open a business. He may lead you to start teaching the word. He may lead you to take on a new responsibility in ministry. He may lead you to write a book. He may lead you to go back to school. He may lead you to start a new career path. He may lead you to just take a step towards success. He may lead you to even decide to take the initiative in different areas. Um, that takes bravery. So the question is, what is God telling you to do? What is God telling you to start? There is a level of fear that comes with following the lead of God, but you have to trust that if God is telling you to do it, he is going to make sure it comes to pass. 
All right, so Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So when you're obedient to God, you can trust that he has everything under, under control. You can trust that everything's going to work out in your favor, that everything is going to turn out good because as long as God is telling you to do something he's going to make sure there's provision he's going to make sure that the doors open he's going to send the right people in your life you just have to trust he's going to send you the right friends he's going to send you the right circle he's going to send you all the things that you need so ladies when God calls you to do anything it is in you to accomplish it and he will empower you and equip you to complete the task do not let fear stop you from being obedient to God. Um, because I touched on it a little bit. It's the unknown. What, what's going to happen when I take this step? What will the results be? And sometimes we worry about the results. But you can't worry about the results. Because you, you just have to be brave. The enemy wants to stop you before you get started. The enemy wants to stop your progress. He wants to stop your impact. But you can't allow him to do that. And so I have an example in the Bible of bravery in a woman, and um, it's Deborah. So Deborah was a, a prophetess, um, meaning that she heard from God and she released the word that God was given to the people, for the people. And not only that, she acted as a leader. And this is very powerful because in the Bible days, women were not often in the forefront for ministry, for doing what God is telling to do, leading people. That's, that is very rare right so we have this woman Deborah who takes a position as a spokesperson for God and not only that but she will she is considered one of the judges all the other judges of the Bible are men Deborah is the only noted judge in the Word of God and so Deborah um, it says Barak was hesitant to obey the Lord because Deborah and Barak worked together um, but Deborah boldly reminded him of God's promise to go before them and the blessings that come with obedience so Deborah acted in a position that no other woman had during her time during a time where men alone led the nation of Israel, Deborah was a prophetess that God could use to be a voice in the kingdom. Fear could have gripped her from saying what God told her to say or acting boldly and stepping into a position as the only female judge. However, she was an available vessel who God could use. So the question today is, are you available? As a woman of God, are you going to walk in bravery? Are you going to be bold enough to act and be in a position that God can use you to impact a nation? She impacted a nation, all right, when she spoke what God told her to say. So um, there may be nations associated with you. There may be cities, regions associated with you. Families are associated with you. Circles are associated with you. So you can be an impact for your area of influence, your sphere of influence, and then God can continue to spread that over time. But when you do what God is telling you to do, you're able to make an impact. So be brave because you don't know whose life you're encouraging. You don't know whose life you're changing. You don't know whose life you're, you're, you're altering for the good. So be brave as a woman of faith. Um, the second one is be unashamed of who you are. Be unashamed of who you are. It takes bravery to live unashamed of who you are and your stance as it relates to your faith and your relationship with God or Christ which they're the Trinity. Every day there are opportunities for you to take a stand for God. Make God known in your responses or even mention him. Romans 1 and 16 says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then the Gentile. God honors those who honor him. And so I wanted to talk to you all about being unashamed of who you are um, in regards to your faith in God, um, with this woman in the Bible, there was a woman named Rahab. Rahab was um, a harlot, a prostitute at, at one point, and even during the point that she decided to do what she's going to do, which I'm going to tell you about. So Rahab, Rahab hid um, 
the Hebrew spies that were coming out to spy out the land of promise. She hid three of the spies um, during that time. And what was going on was God promised the land of the, the children of Israel, Canaan, and they had to get through all of these different regions and cities and areas in order to reach that land of promise. And so they went to spy out the, this land and, um, Rahab knew that if they were seen, they would be killed. And so they needed somewhere to hide, Joshua and Caleb. So Joshua and Caleb hid in Rahab at the like the top area of where Rahab was. And because of her faith, she was considered a woman of faith because she said, I have heard about your God. I have heard about your God. And I believe that your God is a true and living God. I just ask that you spare my family when you come to conquer this city. And so that's exactly what she said. That's what she did. And when God allowed them to come, her family was spared. All right. So don't be ashamed of who you are. She could have allowed fear to say, don't go help them. Don't help them because then you're going to be killed. But she didn't worry about her being killed because she believed in the God that they served. And so that in turn ended up blessing her house. So Rahab honored God by making sure his children, these two spies were taken care of when they went out to spy out the land that God told them was theirs. In return, God spared her and her family. She was not ashamed to say that she heard about the God of Israel and their success, their successful conquest by the power of their God, which caused her to believe. When you are unashamed, it, could, it should cause you to act. So because she was unashamed to say that she now believed God, it caused her to act and she helped these two men. And I want to say the reason why I can name her as a woman of faith who acted bravely. Hebrews 11 is, is known as the hall of faith. Hebrews 11 and 31 says, by faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. So you want God to be there for you. You want God to see you through. You want God to make ways and open doors in your life. That takes you not being ashamed of who you are and acting in a way that glorifies God, that honors God. That's acting bravely. And the last thing that I want to touch on is um, another way to be brave is to be prayerful in the midst of adversity. So adversity is going to come. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be challenges. Life offers challenges, but it's about how you make it through those challenges. It's about how you walk through those challenges. And so one way that we ought to walk in the midst of challenges is with prayer. So prayer is so vital to being brave. Prayer is our greatest source of strength because it is how we connect to God. When adversity comes, we have to be brave. Various situations and circumstances will arise to challenge your faith. However, when the enemy comes against you, prayer is another weapon you must use. Ephesians 6 and 18, which is coming from that armor uh, that armor strong section because we're in Ephesians 6 verses 10 through 18. So Ephesians 6 18 says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. When you are prayerful, the enemy cannot do as he pleases to you. Instead, you can walk in power and authority. You can have peace when you're supposed to be in chaos. You can have joy when you're supposed to be depressed. You can have strength when you're supposed to be weak. Although adversity will come in, prayer will bring you back in alignment through the authority that God has given you. Prayer brings about change because you are going to your father and acting in the power he gives to his children. So 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 4 through 5, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of the strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity 
every thought to the obedience of Christ. So that is the power that we have. That's the authority that God has given us that we're able to pull down strongholds. We pull down strongholds in prayer. So let me tell you of a woman in the Bible who showed that Hannah is um, the woman. So um, it's no, I'm not going to deal with Hannah. I love Hannah. But it says Ephesians 12 verses 12 through 14. So when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a girl named Rhonda came to answer. When she recognized Peter's voice because of her gladness, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. So let me give you a little context before we get to these verses in the word. So what happens here is Peter is in prison. Peter is put in prison because he um, was preaching the gospel, teaching the gospel. They knew who he was, found him, captured him, put him in jail. And these people were gathered together and women were gathered together praying. They were interceding on Peter's behalf. And they were saying, Lord, we want Peter free because he was in there in an unjust fashion. He was just teaching the truth, the word of God. And so they were in there praying. They were going, they were praying. And Peter, the angel ends up shaking up the jail where he was. And Peter is able to go free. So he goes to where they are in a woman's house where this prayer is happening. They go and they knock on the door where Peter is. And Peter um, is at the door like, okay, um, you know, I'm here. And so a young girl sees that, that he was there. She's so excited. Instead of opening the gate, she just runs back in and said, Peter's here. Peter's here. Peter's here. And they're saying, oh, just go, go, go. You know, we're just going to stay here and keep praying. Peter ends up coming in and they are overjoyed at what God has done. And that is so powerful and important. It shows you that when you are praying, when you are going to God about a situation, whether it's for yourself, whether it's for, for your family, whether it's for your community, whether it's for your nation, whether it's for another nation, whatever it is, when you go to God for someone else, God is going to honor that as well as he honors the prayers that you send up for yourself. I think of Job when he went through all that he went through. Um, God had him to pray for his supposed friends who were basically not friends. They weren't really comforting him. They were just like saying, what happened to you? Why did all of this happen in your life? And if you know the story of Job, the devil said to God that he is only faithful to you, only believing in you and only a good man of God because of what you gave him. So God says you can touch him, but just don't take his life. And so his kids um, were killed. He lost all of his wealth. His wife turned his back on him. And so these friends were supposed to be there comforting him. And they were saying, what have you done? You've done some evil. You've done some terrible thing. And Job, Job had God have him pray for them. And then he was blessed and God opened up doors for him and God forgave the people that were speaking ill of him. And so that, that, that text is so powerful, but I wanted to show you the bravery in this, these women praying that God would change the situation, that Peter would go free. Prayer works. God moves by your prayer. God is drawn to your prayer. He's drawn to your faith. So whatever it is that's on your mind, whatever it is that you're worried about, whatever it is that you're concerned about, whatever it is you need God to do, whatever it is, it doesn't matter if it's financial, if it's spiritual, if it's relational, whatever it is that you need God to shift and turn in your life, you just have faith. You just seek God in prayer. You take it to him in prayer and you can watch God move. You can watch God turn things around. Um, I, I think about um, bravery and I look at my own life and um, going back to school. You know, I like school. I love doing well in school. But the pressure of going to school, getting good grades, and meeting the deadline so I can get my official teacher certificate, it, you know, there, there, there had to be bravery. I had to believe that I'm going to go to school. I'm going to finish my degree. I'm going to get my license. I'm going to meet all my class requirements, all the deadlines that I needed to meet. I had to believe that God was going to see me through um, that that 
season of my life where I was working on my masters and everything like that. That took bravery. It takes bravery for you to go back to school. It takes bravery for you to apply to school and you don't have all the funding that you need. You don't have a full scholarship. It takes bravery for that. It takes bravery to apply for a job that you may have the qualifications or you might not and go on the interview and give it your best. It takes bravery for that. It takes bravery to decide to start a business. It takes bravery to, to believe that God is going to do something that if he doesn't do it, it's completely impossible. It takes bravery for these things. And I want to encourage you all to be brave. God is with you. He is for you. I said yesterday when I was live with my husband that God is so awesome. He's so big. He's so mighty that he's in front of you taking care of you. He's behind you watching your back and he's beside you. He's all around you making sure that you're good, making sure that you're taken care of so we can be brave, not because of how great we are, but we can be brave because of how great he is. And I want to tell you, you're not disqualified because you make a mistake. You're not disqualified because you didn't go when God first told you to go or move when God first told you to move. When God first told me to do this blog, it was at least a year before I ever started actually doing my blog because I was afraid of, of what people might think and what people might say. But I had to make a decision to go and be obedient to God. I had to make a decision to take my concerns to God in prayer. I had to make a decision to obey him, right? So that's what it takes. So I wanted to just talk to you about these three things of how to be a brave woman of faith, be obedient to God, be unashamed of who you are. And that's what I had to do and be prayerful in the midst of adversity that God is going to see you through. So I, I just want to tell you that your victory will come from your willingness to be brave in spite of the fear that will try to silence you and keep you stagnant. The enemy wants to stop you where you are, but you have to be determined to not let the enemy stop you, not let fear stop you, but to be all that God has called and ordained you to be. God has so much for you to do, but it is only if you are willing to see and allow him to unfold and unravel and unveil the greatness of who you are. But all of that only comes with each step of obedience, each step of saying, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to be unashamed of who I am. Each step of saying that I'm going to bring everything to God in prayer. So I just wanted to come in here and talk with you all today about those things. And I pray that you are encouraged to be brave. I don't know what God is leading to you to do. I don't know if it's to start a business, a clothing line, um, whatever it is. I don't know what God God is telling you to do to step forward in ministry. I don't know what if God is telling you to apply for this job you've been looking at, but you've been too afraid because you feel like you won't get the position. I don't know what God is telling you to do. I'm not, I don't know. Um, I don't know if you're afraid to, to share some information that you know might help somebody else, but you're not sure if they'll receive it from you. Whatever it is, be brave. God is making connections. God is opening doors. God it wants to do wonderful things in your life, but fear will stop you. Fear is a door that you put up that will block you. But there's a door right behind that fear that God has already opened for you. Are you going to allow fear to keep the door that God has already opened blocking you to where you're, you're destined to go through? So that is so important to be brave women. God has equipped us. You are not weak. You are strong. You are armor, armor strong. So I wanted to encourage you all with that today. Thank you for joining in. And like I always do, I say a word of prayer to finish off. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for today. I thank you, God, that you have made women who are strong. God, I thank you, God, that you put desires in our hearts. You put um, notions in us, ideas in us, creative ideas in us in us to do something great, do something impactful, do something that could change our nation, do something that can impact our families, do something, God, that will show your glory, your majesty, and your power at work in a woman's life, in a, in a, person that believes in you. So God, I just thank you right now and I give you all glory and honor and praise today. God, I speak, God, that women are going to take a step in a direction that shows their bravery, what you've been telling them to do, but you've been putting it on their heart to do, God. Even if they don't even know or realize that that idea came from you, that that unction is coming from you, God, even if they don't know, God, I pray that they will know that it's coming from you so that they can know, God, that they don't have to worry about being 
being inadequate. They don't have to worry about feeling disqualified because God, you qualify us, God. You make things happen for us, God. It is your your power, your love for us, and your divine plan. So God, we just thank you now and we give you glory, honor, and praise for it today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I love you ladies. I love everyone. Thank you for joining in. If you believe that this will bless somebody else, I always, always invite you to share so you can go ahead and do that. God bless you. Again, you can go to my website, www.newbeginningswithme.com so you can go back and reference all the scriptures that I mentioned during the blog just to be able to follow up um, with what I'm saying as well as go back to the word, read it for yourself and be empowered about it all over again. You may get a fresh revelation that I didn't even get, right? So that's important. So I love you guys so much. Thank you so much. God bless you.